Jed here to provide a quick overview of the in-session experience of GoToMeeting. When I say in-session, that applies to what happens after you've clicked a link to join a meeting. Even though this will be a brief overview, we've got additional resources for you in the description. To have access to the most features, it's highly recommended that organizers and co-organizers use the GoToDesktop app when hosting a meeting. I'll be using that for this video. If you want to access GoTo on the web, it can be accessed at this site. I've already signed in as the user Ryan Noble. Before discussing what options you have after joining a meeting, I'll briefly discuss how you get to that point. If you know the meeting name or ID, that can be entered here to join the meeting. If you've integrated your Office 365 or Google Calendar with GoTo, sessions with a valid meeting link in the title or email will appear here. You can click on those when it is time to join a meeting. You can click here if you want to create a one-time meeting, a reusable meeting, or even use the instant meeting feature. Let's join a meeting. This screen is where you can double check things before actually joining the meeting. From here, you can edit your display name and choose to enable or disable your microphone and camera. The display window reflects what will be shown to others in the session. You may also see the option to use a virtual background if desired. Be sure to enable the audio setting if you want to speak and hear others during the meeting. If you're using computer audio, select from the drop-down list the appropriate microphone and speakers. If you would rather call in using your phone, click here to find the information that you'll need to join the session. If the option has been enabled by the meeting organizer, you can have GoTo call you when the meeting starts. You'll just need to provide your country and cell number for that to work. When you're ready, click this button to either start or join the meeting. I've now joined a meeting. If you need to change the status of your microphone or camera, here's where those can be turned on or off. Click the share button. If sharing your screen, you can decide if you want to share everything that is seen on a specific monitor or limit it only to a certain application like a web browser. There is an option to share system audio if desired. Ryan is now sharing his screen. What we are seeing right now is from his viewpoint and is considered the regular layout. The screen that is being shared will be surrounded by a green border. That will turn yellow if the sharing process is ever paused. All users can change their view options to find their favorite layout. Click the pop out button in the bottom right corner. In this layout, Attendees are shown in a separate area, and you have a smaller panel featuring all of your controls. You'll even find some additional buttons here, like being able to use drawing tools during a session. If you are not seeing the other attendees when in this layout, click this button. To return to the previous layout, click the Merge button. Click the arrow next to the Share button. You have an option to pause screen sharing here. When it is clicked, attendees will still see the shared screen, but it will appear as a still image. It will remain that way until the organizer clicks resume. In this case, while paused, I changed what content is being shared. Meeting organizers can record the event and pause and resume as needed. This conference will now be recorded. Pausing and resuming will not split the video into multiple files. The React button allows you to virtually raise your hand or provide a quick emoji reaction that others can see. Click the session info icon in the top left corner to see information about the meeting, like the nine digit ID. 
If you want to have others join the meeting, this information can be shared with them. If you're the organizer or co-organizer, you can lock or unlock the meeting by clicking this button. If a meeting is locked, attendees who try to join will be put in a waiting room until you unlock the meeting. Now let's talk about the icons in the top right corner, and we'll start with the people icon. The people icon is a full attendee list. You can manage attendees here. If you hover over an attendee's name and click the more icon, you are presented with options. While actively screen sharing, you have the option to give an attendee remote control permissions, which allow for them to use your computer and mouse. Let's move on to chat. The chat option allows you to send messages to the entire group or a specific person. You can also download chat messages. To do so, Click the more icon, which looks like three dots stacked on top of each other. And then, if needed, click download chat messages. It should be noted that when you download chat messages, it will only download those which have been created up to that point. Previously, we chose our audio devices and camera. If you need to change those during a session, you can do so from the settings section within the audio and camera tabs. Click the session tab. The results here will vary depending on if you are the organizer or not. You'll find different options here that apply to how you want to view the session and if applicable, you'll have the options to grant or permit certain actions to other attendees. When you're ready to exit, click the leave button. If you're the organizer, you can then decide if you want to end the meeting for everyone in attendance or only for yourself. That concludes this quick overview of the in-session experience of GoToMeeting.